Hey everyone, it's Dylan from the Black Forest Wood Company. This client got us to build a countertop that was almost identical to the one that they already had. So this client does already have a wooden countertop, but we're gonna build them something that's much nicer than what they have in their kitchen right now. So we're starting this process with a five inch thick slab of Clara Walnut. This piece specifically is coming from Oregon, so it has a little bit different color than some of the California walnut we typically get. As you'll notice throughout this build, this slab almost has more of a red hue that comes out in it. You can even see it here right now in the sawdust when we're doing our rough sizing. And that is our first step of the process. With a big slab like this, it makes sense to break it down closer to your final size before you start flattening the piece because on something this large, you're almost bound to have quite a bit of warp over the whole length. I think this slab measured in at over 20 feet long. So if we tried to just flatten this before we cut it down, we would end up losing quite a bit of our thickness here on the pieces. Hey everyone, so we've got Chaos Film Company. They're here today filming basically everything going on in our shop. So we've got a resin pour happening, we're building an X base. Uh, and this is all for their series called In the Workshop where they go around Canada and feature different woodworking businesses and we're humbled that they chose us for this one and what we've also got going on is Brad is getting the big sawmill out right now we're going to be cutting up one of our Clara Walnut slabs uh, in half, resawing it for thickness and he's going to get to have his big debut, his big feature this piece isn't quite thick enough to give that full five inch thick finish thickness, although it is five inches thick rough. So we're gonna be mitering down the edges of this slab to give it that five inch thick finished appearance. And the first step of that is to resaw off some of the excess material on our horizontal bandsaw mill. We wanted to save some of these beautiful walnut skins because they're Claro, they had a lot of nice figure in them and it just wasn't worth wasting. Now, started at roughly 120 mil. We're bringing it down to 70. 65 to 70 and final thickness for these guys will be 45. Once we've got those pieces resawn, then it's on to our Avid CNC machine to get these pieces flat and ready for some fills. For our fills, we're using our Black Forest Coat Thin Resin because it only takes 24 hours to cure. Alternatively, I guess you could try and use the deep resin for fills like this, but it's kind of overkill. The cracks are small enough that you don't need to use something that cures that slow and you know, no one wants to wait seven days if they don't have to. So we silicone off the perimeter of all these voids and then we're coming along and filling these cracks in and letting it cure for 24 hours before we pop off our mold and then we can begin sending these pieces through our thickness sander. So unfortunately, we don't have our new thickness sander yet coming from SCM. This machine here that we have only has three sanding drums, whereas the new machine is gonna have an additional helical planing head. So we're really excited for that. Then once we've got the pieces sanded, it's time to prepare all of them for lamination. So we're doing you know standard woodworking processes here. We're jointing all of our edges, planing everything to a consistent thickness, and then also riffing everything down to its width. Then we cut some 45 degree angles using our SCM panel saw so that we can glue on these fake edges to give more of that five inch thickness that our client's after. We're also adding some dominoes into this lamination for additional strength. On these 45 degree angle cuts, the, the dominoes do help not only with alignment, but with strength as well. So we find it worth it to add them in for a piece like this especially considering the size of these miters. Some of these are very long and they're gonna get some stress over the life of this piece. For an adhesive, we're using Tight Bond 3, which again might be overkill because it's an exterior rated waterproof glue, but this piece is going in a kitchen, so there's a chance that it could get some moisture. So we're using Tight Bond 3 just to kind of protect it against any worst case scenario. Okay, so that's glue up number one done. Now we have to get these pieces fine tuned for glue up number two. It's a U-shaped countertop sitting on a kitchen island. So there's one long section and then two short sections that return back. And to join these pieces together, we're again cutting a large 45 degree miter cut on the corners to join these pieces together. So again, this is kind of you know scary because it's a lot of wood to join on such a big angle like this but same as the other laminations, we're adding dominoes in there and we're going to be using Tight Bond 3 here as well and putting lots of glue on there. So 
We're trying to go as overkill as we can with this lamination to ensure that nothing fails over time. And then as a final sort of insurance policy and also as a way to help us during the lamination, we're adding some zip bolts into this. And they're, they're classic, you've probably seen them before. They're quite a common piece of hardware. But what it's going to allow us to do is once we apply the glue, we can thread these bolts and actually pull the lamination in tighter together because due to the size of this piece, it's not the easiest piece to get a lot of clamping pressure on. So these zip bolts are really gonna to help to make this easier. And then once that glue up is done, we can work on our sanding up to 320 grit. And also because this countertop is a replacement, we have to kind of construct it to fit over the subframe that's already going to be there on the countertop. So we're adding in some ash brackets, which this will make sense later when you see us go to do the installation. Now, although we already did a round of fills with our black forest coat thin resin, it's almost inevitable that you're gonna have to do multiple rounds of fills. So after we've done the largest ones with the coat thin, then we come along with our quick fix resin to hit any of those smaller voids and imperfections. Something really nice with the quick fix is that it cures in about 15 minutes. So this isn't something that you have to wait until the next day to go ahead and sand off. Pretty much by the time you've worked your way to the other end of the piece, the beginning of the piece is almost cured and ready to begin sanding again. And that's what we're doing here is just using our Merca sander to knock off all those high points and then take this piece up to 320 grit so that we can get it lifted upstairs to apply our natural Black Forest oil-based finish. So part of the reason that the client didn't like the countertop they already have is because it had a urethane finish and it covered up a lot of the feeling of the natural grain characteristics. Something else though that contributes Charlie. Something else though that contributed to that is that the piece is made from veneer, whereas our piece is solid wood. So this countertop in a lot of ways is going to be a huge improvement. This particular corner of the countertop that Curtis is oiling right now is probably my favorite corner of the whole piece because it has what's called crotch grain. And that's created when two limbs of a tree come together and it forms this really dense pocket of wood and you get really beautiful rich grain throughout that section. We're using a white Scotch-Brite to apply the oil here. So Curtis has a small one that he uses in his hand to spread the oil out. And then we have a larger Scotch-Brite that is attached to our Merca sander. And we use that to kind of even out the surface and make sure we get a really nice consistent finish. With our Black Forest Furniture Oil, it is recommended to apply two coats if you want a higher gloss on the finish. But because it is a mono coat oil, you can get all the protection required from a single coat. Now, this particular client did want a little bit higher gloss out of the piece. So after we apply that first coat, we repeat the same process for a second coat. And then we allow that oil to cure for one week before we come along and we apply our Black Forest sprayable graphene coating. This is our most resistant ceramic coating in terms of liquid spills that we offer. It is, like the name implies, a marine grade coating. It was initially designed for use in exterior environments like on yacht hulls or any yacht furniture. So you can be rest assured that if you're using it in an interior application, this product is more than durable to resist any of the spills your piece might encounter. Something else that I should mention is we've used a new product in our finishing line here. We've used our Black Forest Catalyst. So that was paired with the furniture oil that you saw earlier and it essentially increases the dry time, but also increases the resistance to liquids and abrasions. In addition to the countertop that we're building for this client, they also ordered two vanity tops and a custom shelf to kind of match that main countertop piece. So same as the other piece, we begin by debarking these slabs and making sure that we have all of the debris cleaned off from the edges. And on the two vanity pieces, you can see that there's quite a large crack that goes all the way down the center. So in this case, we are using our Black Forest Deep Resin. This kind of a void would be too large to use the coat thin for, and you'd probably have to do it in layers, or if you tried to do it in one shot, you might even have your pour overheat. So once we get our Black Deep Resin mixed up, we pour it into that void, we allow it to cure for one week, and then we get it onto our CNC machine and flattened, and from there, we can get it sized down to its final size, we can sand it up to 320 grit with our Merca sander, and then it's time to apply the same oil finish that we put on the countertop onto these pieces. And then once we have those pieces finished up, it's time to send them off to Toronto and begin the delivery process for this. So we didn't drive these pieces out, we put them in a crate and had them shipped off, and then we flew out to meet them there. We're going to begin first with the vanities and the shelf. So 
We didn't exactly know where the sinkholes were going to need to go on these pieces, so we opted to cut them on site so that we didn't run the risk of having them go in the wrong spot. So once we had everything measured out, we're just using a hole saw to get that initial cut, and then we use a router just to clean up the outside edges of those cut. Beautiful. To secure these pieces in place, we're using PL400 on the steel brackets that the home builder had already installed for us. Again, I believe with these pieces, they had veneered tops that were already in place that the client just didn't like, and that's why they came to us to replace them with something much more high quality made out of solid wood. And then here's a look at the piece with the sink installed. And we did a downstairs vanity like this and an upstairs vanity which both of those slabs were cut from the same tree, so it's an almost nearly identical grain match between the two pieces. So once we've got those vanities installed, the first order of business is to get the old countertop ripped out so that we can get our new one into place. And if I'm being honest, the old countertop was pretty nice. It was walnut veneer. I guess that would be the biggest downside in my opinion is that because it is veneer, it's probably not going to be as durable for a kitchen countertop and that's part of the reason our client wanted to have it ripped out and have something new put in. And here you can also see what I was referring to earlier about the subframe that we're going to have to work around to install our countertop. So all of this blocking and these steel brackets were already pre-built in by the previous maker who built the old countertop. So we've had to make sure that our countertop is going to fit perfectly over top of that and that we're going to be able to mount this securely in place and not have it move. Something else that we had to account for to cut on site were some plug boxes on the inside edge if you're standing on the, the inside of the island, like in the cooking area. They just had a few plugs. I think they had some tablets that they have set up in their kitchen there. So again, we didn't have the exact location of those plugs before we came on site. So we measured everything out when we got there, routed it out, crossed our fingers and hoped that they fit. That's not too much. It's a lot of chiseling, but it's not the worst. That silicone off the tile on the wall. need access to that bottom all I can screw in and the sides for the ash into the side yeah and then I can put my molding here there and there okay. another small detail that we've added to this countertop is a half inch molding that's nailed to the inside edge on the underside and the whole reason we've done this is so that it gives the countertop a little bit of a floating look. Uh, it also makes it easier for our client to clean up any crumbs or anything that get built up around that edge since it's not going to be a really small gap that they have to try and clean in. It's actually going to be raised about half an inch off the marble surface of their other countertop now. And here we are screwing in those ash brackets from earlier. And although this piece didn't have any resin in it like our typical pieces, it was still very heavy due to the size and all the wood we used in it. So fortunately, there was a few people on site there to give us a hand and we were able to get it carefully lifted into the kitchen. Okay, so we gotta lay it flat out here. We're going over. Yeah, in your corner. Come on. I got this. Okay, get it. Come on. You got all the way. I don't got feet. I got. I got feet. Yeah. Put that wire through, Dylan. Yeah. I need to send the wires through. Must be sitting on the wire. Me? Yeah. Uh, it's probably. What are we yeah, sitting on there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's going down now. Yeah, it's it. Okay. okay, you set the wire on that side. Okay. Yeah, that's down. And then to clean the piece up, we've also ordered some walnut veneer panels. So there, there is some veneer on this piece technically, uh, but they're going to go on the underside of this piece just so that you don't have that open cavity where people's knees are going to be. And there's also some more plug boxes that also go on the underside as well.
Oh, fuck, John. Beautiful. So we'll take a closer look at the countertop after we do a walkthrough of the house. But first, I want to know, do you think that this was worth the $46,000 that our client spent to have this upgrade? Well, as you guys can tell, this property is incredible. I'm sure you got some glimpses of it while we were installing. Um, but let's go do a walkthrough. We'll do a look around at everything we installed and you guys can let us know what you think about this place. All right, so the first piece that we have here is our bathroom vanity. Canadian black walnut, crazy figure in these pieces you can see. Um, pretty simple, not much resin besides what we used to fill, but that's, that's piece number one. Okay, piece number two, the main feature arguably, is our Clara walnut countertop. And you guys saw what we were replacing. It was already a pretty nice countertop, but it was veneer, so it wasn't real wood. What we have done here is taken one massive slab of Clara walnut, we've mitered all the corners to wrap it down in its full thickness, and there's no plywood or veneer used on this project at all. It's premium, premium material. And fortunately, this install went very, very well. John, as always, killed it and didn't really run into too many hiccups. So that's piece number two. Piece number three now is this little floating shelf. So again, nothing too crazy, not very substantial, but just a nice, clean and simple shelf in here. Canadian black walnut to match everything else. And something unique that this has is there is an LED strip and that goes underneath into a little groove at the back. All the way back here there's a groove so when that's all rigged up they can just illuminate underneath the shelf. So now for piece number four we'll go all the way downstairs and check out the final bathroom vanity. And here's our final piece. So again matching to that one you saw upstairs. This piece actually came from the exact same slab as that other one. Um, but pretty simple, nice live edge, and a black epoxy fill to complete it. As a bit of a bonus, here's the back side of the house. So that behind me there, in those big windows, is where our countertop is. And then this way, you've got the lake. So let's go take a look at this. Pools everywhere as well. So if you want to get in the water, you head down there. Or come out here and have a hot tub or a barbecue, watch TV, whatever you want to do. So this was one of the most incredible properties that we've ever been on. Again, huge thank you to our client for all the trust and I really hope that you guys enjoyed seeing this.